What is good, everybody? Today we are back with a brand new horror action figure set up to celebrate the month of Halloween and October, and we have a massive horror action figure set up. So we're back, man, back in my damn kitchen for another massive horror action figure setup, and it is bigger and better than ever today, man. We have a lot of figures strewn throughout. As always, I hope you guys are enjoying your October, your Halloween season, man. But with that being said, we have a lot of figures to get through, and I want to go through every single one of them with you. So let's buckle the hell up. So let's go ahead and dive into it. We'll start off in the corner, and then we'll make our way all the way around. So I really feel like last time, I didn't really incorporate any kitchen utensils. I didn't incorporate anything kitchen-related, and usually it's... It's, you know, it revolves around the kitchen. We get to, you know, experiment with some sort of food or beverage or something like that. But in this one, we even got some weapons out right here, man. So we have the cheese grater, John Moxley upside down, Jason Voorhees and Sam. Have John Moxley turned upside down. They are scraping his face across the cheese grater. It is just digging into the flesh, the flesh of Mox, something he's pretty used to right here. So we do have Voorhees and Sam kind of double team in there. And we do have this saw blade right there. Not good. It's even got blood stains on it. So not very good over here, man. Not looking good for Mox, but if it, it probably, I don't know which one's worse, probably probably this one, to be honest with you, but you can let me know what you think down below, I guess. It's honestly not even a debate. We have Pennywise the Clown right here, the OG Pennywise, and he is burning MJF right here. He is set on fire. He's set ablaze right here. Man made his own damn campfire in the kitchen, and we do have MJF burning right here. Burning is obviously a lot worse, I believe. I mean, I don't really think it's up for debate. I think that, yeah, I think if anybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that my brother helped me with over here, and honestly, you know what? He's, he must be a tribal chief hater or something because I usually, in my setups, I always have the tribal chief standing tall beating the hell out of people. But in this one, he has Jason Voorhees choking out the tribal chief, which is just blasphemous, man. It's just absolute blasphemy to the tribal chief, making fun of him, taking him out right there. And so I let it stand for now, but you must believe that in the next horror action figure setup, the tribal chief will rise again. He'll take out Jason Voorhees, and we, he will get his comeuppance. He will retaliate. He will come again, and he will take out Jason Voorhees, but let's believe that, man, but we come over here, we kind of have an Easter egg, kind of a callback to Freddy vs. Jason, anybody seen that movie, let me know down below, one of my favorites growing up was Freddy vs. Jason, and we do have Freddy upside down right here, he's kind of strung up, and we have this massive part seven about to take out Freddy Krueger, so I thought that that was pretty good, have a little tie-in right there, a little Easter egg for our Friday the 13th, Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street fans. If you're a fan of that film, you know what I'm talking about. This is a nice callback to that film right there. But if we come down right here, we do have the Bride of Frankenstein. And she wanted to attempt to take out the animal, and she failed, man. She failed miserably. She got Batista bomb through the table on the stove right there. So we do have Batista giving a nice Batista bomb to the bride right there. And unfortunately, Mr. Frankenstein was, uh, or I guess fortunately in his case, which you'll see later on in the setup. But the bride did get put through the table. You don't cross the animal and expect to get out alive, man. So Batista did make her pay right here in the setup. Another brutal section of the setup is we do have Wheeler Yuta taking the sander to the face right there, man. And Victor Crowley has just assaulted him right here. He's taking him out. He's got his overalls on. He looks a bloody freaking mess. I think last time he had the ankle lock put on him or something like that. If you guys have missed our other action figure setups, always check them out. They're a lot of fun. Kind of get you into the Halloween spirit. They're kind of brutal sometimes. But you know what? We're having fun out here. But we do have Wheeler Yuta. He's getting sanded in the forehead, man. And my God, I can't even imagine. You even have the blood-soaked stains on the sandpaper right there. Just a brutal way to get attacked right there. But I'm sure Wheeler will respond. He's a tough kid. He's going to get up and beat the hell out of Victor Crowley, possibly. Come to the left over here. We do have Dustin Rhodes down on the table. He's strapped down, much like Wheeler Yuta was in our last setup. And, and Leatherface right here has the chainsaw. He's about to take out Dustin. Dustin's already a bloody mess. And you can look over the shoulder of Leatherface, and you can see Cody Rhodes with this massive machete about to take out Leatherface and bring his brother to justice right there. So that's kind of what we have going on right here. We have the American Nightmare about to come save his brother Dustin right here from the attack of Leatherface. He'll undo him there, and I guess, you know, we'll see what happens. But we do have kind of that active heroic savior complex coming in right here with Cody Rhodes attempting to save his brother from Leatherface here in the action figure setup. If we come back here a little bit, we do have the Crooked Man, and he has strapped down LA Knight. LA Knight very terrified here to the chair, and Crooked Man always doing his best right here to be crooked, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's going crazy right here about to attack LA Knight, so he's doing his best right there, but uh, LA Knight not in the best predicament, as they say, but I would say he's probably a lot better off than Hulk Hogan, because if we go over here to Hulk Hogan, the Predator has taken out Hulk Hogan right here. I love that Predator figure. I wish I had more of them. 
but unfortunately never have uh, never really gotten into him. But that was sent to me, and I wanted to use it in the setup. So we do have him taking out Hulk Hogan. That Hulk Hogan's kind of been a staple for a few years, and I always try to use the ones that have been kind of customized for these setups in the setups themselves because what better use of them than here today in these style setups. Just like Hulk Hogan, we do have our Candice Michelle over here, and she has been impaled by the alien. So alien and Predator not going war together, but they are taking out some WWE action figures in this setup here today. So we do have the alien figure taking out the Candace Michelle. And she's usually getting taken out by Michael Myers or something like that. But today, the alien figure, the only alien. I only have one alien and I only have one predator. So we do have each of those kind of attacking right here. But we will get some offense in from some WWE or wrestling action figures as well to go up against the horror action figures. Now, if we come forward from there, we do have this part two, Jason. And he is about to attack Brody King. And Brody King is a bloody mess because he has just taken this pizza cutter into the side of the face of this massive Jason Voorhees. So ma this massive Jason Voorhees, he fell down, and Triple H actually over here has taken the knife to his hand. So the hand has been cut by the knife. The pizza cutter has just been embedded into the side of the skull of this Jason Voorhees, and I thought that was pretty gnarly. And I know Brody King, I do believe he is a horror fan as well, and he has taken the pizza cutter right to the side of the skull of this Jason Voorhees. And you know, they're always banding together to take out the giant horror characters in these setups, and no different here today than this giant Jason being taken out. But I thought it fit nicely because I think this comes with an axe or a machete. I think it's the machete, and it can slide perfectly in there. So I thought the pizza cutter, you're in the kitchen. It makes sense. So that's what we have here. But it won't last long, right, because we do have part two, Jason, come, coming behind right there. We'll have to find out if he can indeed reverse it or take him out as well. Kind of looks like he's about to miss, though, so we'll have to see. But if we come forward, we do have this part seven, Jason, right here, my favorite iteration of the character. And he has this strung-up chain all the way down, and he has choked out Nick Jackson that's hanging right here. But uh, <laughs> that wasn't even planned. I did not have it planned where his legs fell off or his lower half fell off. So his lower half fell on the floor, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, you hate to see that. We do have this brutal look here for Nick Jackson getting choked out right there, unfortunately. Coming forward a little bit, man. We do have this Kurt Angle, and I just thought this was great because I had this flame effect. And he's running away from Michael Myers, who is on fire. This Michael Myers figure is on fire a lot in the setups. But what I like the most about it is he's on fire here. But I was able to attach this flame effect to the head of, of Kurt Angle here. And usually, I don't like to have Kurt Angle getting beat up in the setups. I typically like to have him angle slamming somebody or locking the ankle lock in on somebody or just battling it out, similar to a Brock Lesnar, guys like that. I like to have people fighting back most of the time, especially guys like Kurt Angle, those tough guys, those ones that were all, always battling through injury. But the flame effect fit perfectly onto his head, I guess, because it's a bald head sculpt. And I just thought that it, it I don't know, it was kind of funny a little bit. So I did, uh, I just attached it right there. But not that I don't believe he couldn't turn around and put Michael Myers in the ankle lock while on fire. I truly believe he could do that. But uh, that we just have Kurt Angle running away right there. And he is kind of yelling. And it kind of reminded me of Home Alone or something. So I don't know. I like that film a lot. So it just kind of brought me to the, I don't know, the Christmas season kind of, even though his head's on fire. I know it doesn't make sense. Coming forward, man, we do have Chris Jericho locked up in this box. And Jason Voorhees, this part six Voorhees, is kicking the case off of the countertop. A brutal way to fall off the counter. Maybe somebody can come save him before the time is too late. Maybe Kurt Angle can come in and tackle this Voorhees or something. But he is giving this sort of Spartan kick to Chris Jericho, who is upside down. Brutal, brutal way to be locked up in the case right there. But I've always wanted to use this in some other way, like on the channel, but I've never really figured out a creative way. But uh, I figured this worked out for today. And if we just come beyond that, we do have Michael Myers on the two stack. There's a double stack of tables right here. And if we climb the ladder, man, you will see. This is probably the highest I think anybody's ever been in an action figure setup, at least in the kitchen. We do have Jeff Hardy way up here, man. Way up here on this ladder, on top of these platforms, all the way to the ground, and he is on top right there. And maybe, if I can remember, hopefully I can remember at the end of the video, we'll do a swan time bomb off the top and go through the table here. I do it now, but I feel like it'll knock over like a hundred things, and I really don't want to deal with that right now. So we'll, we'll see what comes of it later, but Jeff Hardy coming down, swan time bomb onto Michael Myers. I like the way he looks. I like this pose right here on the table as well. He's kind of laid out, so I like that. And then maybe even come down on him again, we do have Charles. We have Chucky on top of the shoulders of John Cena about to deliver a massive AA off the platform, possibly 
through Michael Myers, through the tables down here. But I thought that John Cena, you know, John Cena is one of my favorites. So got to be, you know, getting an AA in right here. And I like to put my my favorite guys, I like to put them on offensive display, fighting back against the figures, you know. But also somebody who's, I don't know if he's undefeated, but a man who has a really strong track record in these setups is Brock Lesnar. He has choked out the My Bloody Valentine minor guy. And he, I guess, I lost his hand way back in the day. I don't know what happened to it, but I sure as hell know he's getting choked the life out of him right here in the setup. So Brock Lesnar is doing a good job right there. Lifted up off the platform, you know, and uh, trying to hold his own here in the setup. But I always like to get some offense again on with the uh, wrestling action figures fighting back against the horror figures. But if we come up top, we do have Ash, and he has his rifle, and he's kind of aiming out across the setup to try and help out some of these fellow characters and stuff. So he does have his weapon. He's ready to go, and he's kind of, you know, aiming across the setup to help guys out as much as he possibly can. And one thing I kind of forgot to mention is that the Bride of Chucky is underneath this can of Chunky Campbell soup. So you know she ain't getting nowhere, man. She is uh, kind of parked up under there. So Cena, I guess, crushed her with the can. And then he climbed up there, and then Chucky wanted the smoke too. So he, he climbed up aboard, and now he's going for a ride. And that's just kind of how it played out in the setup. So she got crushed by the Chunky can of Campbell's soup. That's a heavy can, man. You're, I mean, you, everybody knows you get up under one of those things, you're not moving, man. 140 calories worth of soup in there. You got the thick chicken meat in there. You're not moving, man. So that's kind of what happened right there. Coming forward, we kind of have a renewal of a rivalry, if you will. Kind of similar to the Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees back there. We have a Part 7 Jason and a Michael Myers doing sort of like a trade for blows right here. They're kind of fighting back and forth here. Kind of rivalry renewed of the MDT Tournament of the Dam. So that's kind of what we have playing out right here. I always still like to tie back to that video, man. If you guys missed that Tournament of the Dam matchup, go check that one out. That was a fun one. And we do have those guys kind of, again, fighting it out right here. And here is finally Frankenstein. Now, my brother did this one. This was not me. But he has his handcuffs choking out AJ Styles. And I was like, man, I don't really see this in the character of Frankenstein. But maybe he got sick of it. Maybe he got sick of it. And, you know, maybe AJ Styles crossed him one too many times. And he's like, you know what, Brad? I'm going to lock you up with these handcuffs. And that was a pun, and I didn't mean to. But we do have Frankenstein choking out AJ Styles right here. That one wasn't me. I think I could have come up with a lot, something a lot better than that. So shots fired. And then we also come forward. We also have Stone Cold Steve Austin right here. And I like this one because I feel like this would be a really fun pairing on television, especially back in the day. Can you imagine Stone Cold Steve Austin and Dan Housen on the same television? Just some, I just feel like that would be pretty brilliant TV. But we do have this massive blade that Stone Cold holds. And you guys know that he always likes to open cans of whoop ass and Chunky Campbell's soup. And he has beat up this Pennywise from 2017 and this Otis from House of a Thousand Corpses. He has chopped off the arm of him. He's chopped off the leg, the hand. He's going at these guys. So, you know, while that's all happening, Dan Housen is cursing these guys. So he's cursing them while Stone Cold Steve Austin is opening cans of whoop ass. And that's how it went here today in the setup. Now, coming beyond that, we do have Rob Van Dam about to leap off on the Candyman. So this is just kind of a simple thing. Not anything overthought right here. Just kind of a... I guess a cross body off the top, taking out Candyman. Again, another one we may could do later on at the end of the setup. Maybe have some of these action poses and stuff like that. But if we work our way around right here, man, we will have Matt Cardona pushing one of these Jason Voorhees in a buggy. And he's going to push them off and plummet all the way down off the top, maybe into the dog bowl. But we do have... Matt Cardona pushing this Jason Voorhees in the buggy. You know, I always like the buggy. The buggy is a fun spot. It's always a fun spot. Throwing back to video games and stuff growing up. Like, here comes the pain. Shut your mouth and stuff. And then we do have Michael Myers getting put up in a powerbomb from Kevin Owens. That may be another, like, action sequence we can do where we'll have the powerbomb off the top there and into the dog bowl. I did remove the food and the water. Uh, there may be a little water down there, but I did remove the food and stuff so that the figures wouldn't get, you know, all nasty in there. I could just move the dog bowls, I guess, but... I don't know, something's kind of fun about him slamming him off the top of the counter because it is a plummet, you know, so he's already been impaled by a machete and everything, so that's kind of how it all played out. But if we work our way around, man, we do have these dogs right here, these demon dogs or Nightmare on Elm Street dogs going after The Rock, and The Rock is getting crushed by this massive propel bottle of water. Again, we're in the kitchen, so you try to get up, you know, you got the cans of soup, you got your water, you got your pizza cutter, these different things, the cheese grater, all those different things. Implement some fun elements and have fun with it. So Michael Myers is crushing The Rock with the, with the massive bottle of water that is holding him down, and then we do have Jason Voorhees with this massive pile of weights trying to hold them up and crush the rock with them. So it's kind of a two-in-one there. So it's kind of weird because they're doing war over there, but these two are working together. I guess it's different eras, different figures of Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees that, you know, just kind of uh, work together or they fight together. So that's just how it works, I guess. But 
kind of their own their own brains working. But over here is a fun part. We do have Reagan from The Exorcist. So Reagan has uh, <laughs> she has had her head punted by Randy Orton. Since she is possessed, she is technically a demon, so she has been punted right here, and when she got punted, she did vomit, so I thought that was kind of interesting here. So, uh, Randy Orton holding no punches here, going right at her, and doing his best to defend himself here in the action figure setup. So, we keep walking around, man. We do have Seth Rollins hitting a massive curb stomp onto Pennywise, and I like this a lot because it's like the broken glass, and he's kind of yelling right there, so you do have Seth Rollins hitting him in the face right there and into the broken glass, and he even has his hand removed and everything, so Seth Rollins hitting a massive curb stomp onto Pennywise always like to get I don't know I think it's more fun I think I don't know it's kind of a mixed bag I guess I like going back and forth though because you do get some of that you know that brutality but then you get some of the wrestling moves on the horror action figures and I think that's really fun too but one of my favorite parts of it and I know this is the bushwhackers and doink but I like to imagine it like it's just a big group of killer clowns or something like that and then you have them all attacking CM Punk right here so CM Punk he's all you know can you imagine being wrapped up and then having four clowns attack you with weapons you'd be absolutely terrified so i don't know do you remember that crazy clown craze that was going around a few years back you guys remember that it may have even been like a decade ago or maybe like seven eight nine years ago something like that absolutely terrifying all those different clips you do have you know captain spaulding you have doink you have the bushwhackers but i like to think of it as like just a group of clown goons or something like that going after one guy and i think that would be terrifying so that was kind of my envision there for that and then i really like the you know the captain spaulding figure with the ultimate edition clown or doink hammer or mallet i thought that was pretty cool so i did like to see all four of these together they kind of look like their own wrestling faction so that's kind of where the idea came from but then when we come forward right here we also have a part seven jason taking edge by the hair and i thought that the you know it's sort of his facial expression i'm trying to get it the best i can there but he is like yeah kind of like yanking him by the hair and like trying to like swing him around and that was kind of what i was going for there and his facial expression kind of matched it can you imagine getting like launched by your hair around and around I thought that was kind of what I was thinking and going for right there in the setup. But if we come forward right here, man, I thought that this was pretty clever. This seems like something that you would see on a T-shirt or something around Halloween season or October. You would see some sort of shirt. Like, I don't know. I've seen some different, like, parody shirts and stuff. But can you imagine seeing Chucky and Ghostface and Pinhead and Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees all riding in a vehicle? I swear I've seen something like that. So that was kind of in my mind for this. But I feel like this would be a really nice shot or something like that. I feel like somebody would draw this or have this as their desktop background on their phone or their computer or something like that. It's just kind of what it reminded me of. So they're all like driving the car and they're kind of <laughs> they're kind of like all together running over Logan Paul. That just seems like something that would happen. So uh, that is what we have portrayed right here in the setup. So all, all these guys are going after. And what's funny about that, too, is we do have Loomis right here trying to take him out the best he can. And what's even funnier is if you come forward, um, I tried to stand this figure up and it would not stand up. It kept falling over. So I was like, you know what? You want to trip so bad, you can trip running away from the car. I don't care. So we have that. And then we also have Jimmy Uso running away. So that's what we have here. Logan getting caught right there. And I feel like that would kind of be played out in a film or something. You know, the, the guy that's obnoxious that everybody can't stand. And then, you know, all the horror characters. I feel like that's kind of a cliche, obviously, in horror films too. But then you have uh, Archer right there that fell and you have Jimmy Uso and then you have Loomis doing his best to stop it. But I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know. You got to tell me like, which of these guys, which, which would you pick out of all five, which team would you go right there? I think I'd be either Voorhees or Myers right here. If I were uh, picking one person from this car. And then one of the last things we do have is Kenny Omega hitting a V trigger right here on this Jason Voorhees and knocking his mask off. And I thought that was pretty good right there. I'm a big fan of Kenny Omega, so I have him kind of hitting the knee right there. I thought about getting that. Uh, I couldn't find the steel knee wrap or whatever it was that we've seen or like the, you know what I'm talking about, like the Seth Rollins knee cover to have him like he put a weapon on his knee and then V-triggered him, but I couldn't find one. And then we do have this Roy imposter Jason right here getting strapped down by these other Jasons because this part seven right here that's attacking this Freddy Krueger, it's like, that's the first step. And then after that, we're coming for this Roy over here that's held down by a bob wire because he was the imposter and, you know, he was trying to mock Jason kind of with the mask and everything. So that's kind of what we have here at the end of the setup here for our massive horror action figure setup versus WWE action figures for the month of October. Trying to do one of these every weekend, kind of celebrating, you know, October and everything like that. We always mix together the setups and stuff. We don't do as many WWE action figure setups. Usually, it's usually around Royal Rumble, or maybe we'll do it for a big pay-per-view like WrestleMania and stuff. It's usually when we do it now. Used to do it a lot more back in the day. I would, If you guys wanted to see more of these, 
Maybe we could do some of those in the future if you guys will let me know something down in the comment section below. But then I also forgot to mention this Finn Balor jumping down on the clown goons. So I did have the demon Finn Balor right there about to bail off onto this set of clown goons as well. Forgot to add that part into the setup. But then before we get out of here, we do have to hit the power bomb off the top of the counter right here. So we'll just shove him forward right here. Oh. We'll just shove him forward right here. My goodness, he fell off too, so it's completely just, I don't even, like, unnecessary. He fell off too, so it's kind of one of those things where you seek, you seek out revenge, and then you end up burning yourself in the meantime. And then we do have Michael Myers coming off the top right here. Let me see if I can get, like, a good angle right here. I don't even know. Did he put the peg? Yes, the peg is stuck down right there. I don't even know if I can hit this right here. Just kind of like, nice job, you moron. Man, here he goes. I just had to do a spot. And here he goes. I just had to do a spot. Oh, and then the AA followed. So it actually worked out and they both didn't fall. That was pretty good. Even though it was more of a splash than a swanton, I think I'll take that right there. But I think at the end of the day, man, that's pretty much going to wrap up our horror action figure setup, man. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know down in the comment section below what you guys are, what the, what the hell's going on with the lights, man? Who's, who's doing that to the lights? No, Svaratu. Only real ones are going to get that reference, but that is pretty much going to wrap up the setup, man. Hope you guys did enjoy. I just wanted to get on here and do another action figure setup for you guys. Again, we, I wanted to do one of these every single weekend for the month of October, man, but I greatly appreciate you guys. Please check out our other horror action figure content on the channel if you guys would like to, but a huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate all you fellas. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support as always. I want to know down below in the comment section what your favorite Halloween candy is as well as your favorite horror movie or franchise killer sort of, you know, character. All the, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. Your favorite horror icon or whatever the hell you want to say, man. I want to know that as well as your favorite Halloween candy. Let me know those things down below, but I'm getting the hell out. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.